I'm Celine and I'm here with artist Frank Tool and um, who's done the artwork for our new single I'm Fire which is out Monday the 18th of June and so we're going to just chat about art, music and stuff. It kind of stands out um, from all the other songs on the EP and the forthcoming album. It's just kind of confrontational and um, it's kind of non-apologetic. Like the other songs kind of push and pull and um, the dynamics are really, um, it's, it's, that's the focus, whether this is just, um, it's a bit of a release of energy. We went to secondary school together actually. I think we kind of knew each other because I think it's also a kind of a oriental kind of connection because yeah, yeah, you're half yeah. oriental, I'm full oriental, so there's a kind of a yeah. connection and also being ethnically in a minority yeah, was exactly. a, in the Roman Catholic school. I think you kind of feel, yeah, I think we both kind of felt a little bit out of place yeah. at that time, so I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. where our kind of friendship came about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where Celine comes from, that's my yeah. Chinese name. Mm -hmm. Let's all just check a Chinese name. Yeah, my mum was repeating the camera, but it was really embarrassing. <laughs> what? what is it? Manhole. Manhole? Yeah. What does it mean? It's a name that's my father, but I keep thinking it sounds like a male jiggle, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why I never use it. <laughs> I could still be a big fan name. I wanted a piece of artwork to go along with the launch. And I, I usually do a lot of the kind of artwork myself but it's really nice also to just let go and hand it over to someone else and get their vision and Frank you just had an exhibition in Perth yeah, you live with the yeah. uh, and I'd seen his new work which he's been working with gunpowder and I just really like that idea to um, I'm fire gunpowder but um, without it being that obvious it's the effect that it has it's really kind of it's really beautiful, it's, it's quite delicate, but there's that kind of decay and like um, there's a kind of darkness there um, and it just seems to fit actually visually and actually a lot of the subjects that you use, like the kind of um, butterfly and stuff, that's, you've chosen quite you know, fragile subjects and, and then set them alight <laughs> um, and it just has this really lovely contrasting um, and I thought it would work really well. So, yeah, so that's why I thought it would be good. The whole gunpowder interest came about when I was in art school, but because of health and safety, I, I, can't, I couldn't exactly use gunpowder. What happened was that in 2000, 2016, I wanted, I wanted to return back to drawing, but making drawing a bit more exciting a bit more freer, a bit more contemporary. But I suppose in a way that the Gunpowder's uh, work is, is somewhat personal to me because this whole thing about using fire and creating something because fire can be, uh, as an element that can be, it can be, it can, it can be used to create life but it can also be used to destroy it. It took a lot of trial and error and experimentation because in this kind of art form, whether it's music or art, you got to have to experiment and see what works for you and what kind of blends sense a chord uh, with, with your audience. And somebody else, I did tell someone maybe I've got a bit of a parent mania thing about my work. Anyway, so that's why I like using composite explosives. So. <laughs> I always believe in the arts. There's no such thing as uh, democracy. It should be ruled by complete utter dictatorship. <laughs> So, I usually have to be very careful on that. <laughs> so that's why in this collaboration I thought, okay, Marie Claire, tell me what would you, what would you like? Mm. And you came with the idea with the rules. Yeah, well, I suppose I just, I thought it'd be nice to keep all the artwork kind of similar to the, some of the other artwork that's been on the EP, but then be different. It looks amazing, I've seen it. It's brilliant. What I am very cautious of, because art is quite a solitary occupation, you do become quite introverted and you live inside your head for quite a long time. So do this kind of collaboration is actually quite refreshing because yeah. I'm, you know, I'm basically have to think, okay, I'm a human being, I need to be 
I need to communicate with people. So. <laughs> Um, with dancers and I did a live show once with uh, we were doing improvised music um, and we had a choreographer doing improvised choreography and we had an artist Victoria Evans and she was doing um, kind of live kind of sketching it was, it was really cool I, again like what Frank says I really love working with other people it brings you out of your little you know, introverted zone and um, it kind of forces you to kind of listen and um, respond to other people's creative ideas. God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was driving into, into Glasgow, I was listening to, well, I was listening to one of my first albums I had ever bought when I was a teenager, and that was on Spotify. Brian Ann is waking up on the first part, eh? I love normal. a bit of Brian. Yeah. Who's but I suppose my music just varies. I mean, if I, if I could be really honest about the kind of music, music that I listen to, um, Bon Iver is something is someone I can really closely relate to because um, this whole thing about banishing yourself in the wilderness in the cabin and just like you come out of it enlightened and you make your greatest piece of work. I do sometimes entitle a lot of my uh, work after songs. Sometimes with a bit of cheek and, cheek and humor. For example, I did a, a piece made out of gunpowder using uh, a sheep skull as a subject matter. I've called it Ram Jam after that band who sang Black Betty. <laughs> I kind of have an art background. I went to art school, and like my, my big dream was to leave art school and move to the country strand outside and paint pictures and have millions of children. Um, none of that happened. <laughs> I flunked art school. Uh, I live in London with a dog. When I started this project, um, the Ceiling um, album, I was doing improvised music with Scottish percussionist Sydney Yacom's daughter and that was amazing, it really taught me to make music but not think about it, which is a really hard thing to do. And I was also working, or you know, yeah, kind of hanging out with a noise musician, a Glasgow noise musician called Noma. And both those things, so improvised music and Noma, it blew my mind. Um, it was just a whole new way of looking at music that I'd never really experienced before and um, I kind of felt like I had to express that visually. I'm a real visual person so um, I kind of started doing these kind of large scale abstract paintings and I started taking a lot of um, photographs and took some photographs of dancers using kind of like crappy medium format film cameras, like multiple exposures just trying to kind of capture that um, this kind of new discipline of not thinking. And I, I needed to kind of see how that visually to understand how to do it musically. Um, so it was massively important. Um, I think art helps me understand my music. I think that we're both on the journey in the arts. And I think we're both being on this journey Maybe the same amount of time mm. where you've been more the, on the music while I've been more on the visual arts. Mm -hmm. And I think over time, even though they're kind of different, they've kind of travelled the same parallel path, yeah. where they've actually both kind of matured and changed. And I think that's due to like the more experience we gain, the older we become. It's, it's inevitable that our, you know, our arts will, mm. will, will uh, go through this evolution. Grow and mature. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs>